I wasn't actually a fan of these at first. The front is looking like it's skipped leg day. We'll do the old Halfords receipt test. The wheels are sticking out past the arches. Nothing's ever easy, is it? They are perfect. Last summer, I fitted some Anembo engineering rear axle spacers to my ST150. Those are 20 mil spacers, and I think they look pretty damn good. They definitely widen the rear of the car out quite a bit, and it's almost perfect to the arch, but I guess it could go a little bit further. But nevertheless, I'm really happy. They don't rub, they look good, and I've not had any issues with them. So I'm really happy with the 20 mil spacers. But then my friend Ash had to go one better than me and he fitted 28 mil rear axle spacers to his ST. Now I'll admit, I wasn't actually a fan of these at first. I love them. Well, I'll tell you what, I am actually coming around to them a bit more. I mean, they do sit out quite a bit wider and they do fill up that arch a lot more. And to be fair, now thinking about it, I wish I'd gone with 28 as well. They don't rub either. They don't rub at all unless you've got a full back seat of people. Like I use it for work every day and they're perfect. But yeah, as you can see, there's no signs of any rubbing or anything like that. So. 28 mil spaces, turns out are fine. Originally, I considered going 30 mil with mine, but I dipped out on that just because I couldn't see any photos. No one would show me any photos of anyone with, that's better, with 30 mil spaces. So that's why I went for 20s. But yeah, just look at that shot there from the front looking backwards. Like those 28 mil spaces are the ones. So I think I might have to upgrade in the future. But now Ash has got this really wide back end. The front is looking like it's skipped leg day. The fronts are looking way too skinny. So Ash has decided that he's gonna space out the front wheels as well. Now, obviously with the fronts, the only real option is to use a hub spacer. So there's not really an awful lot to show you there, but this has been quite a hot topic on the Facebook pages recently. So we thought we'd get the camera out and just film it because you never know, we might run into some problems like the original studs might be a bit too long with the spaces or whatever. So we're gonna go through it and just show you guys and more so just to show you the sort of stance of it and how it's sitting on standard alloys once it's all done with the backs and the fronts both spaced. Now, as you can see, the weather is miserable today, but we're going full sends in the rain and just getting this done. Like it's miserable out here, but we just need to get this done today. So before we get the wheels and everything off, let's show you the spaces that Ash has got. So what Ash has gone for, now these are secondhand, but what he's picked up are some 20 mil hub centric barbarian wheel spaces or hub spaces. These are more commonly known. Now the difference between these and maybe what you might get on some other brands is with Fords, you put the wheel over the studs and then you just have a nut that goes over the top. Whereas other cars, you tend to put a bolt through into the hub. So with that, you'd need extended bolts and you wouldn't be able to sort of bolt the spacer to the car. But with these, you bolt these on first using these nuts. So these holes, the original studs go through here, use the nuts that are just wound on there for the second to hold the spacer to the hub. And then you bolt the wheel on top of these studs that are sticking out the spacer. I know it's pretty self-explanatory, but just in case you weren't sure, then I thought I'd just let you know, I suppose. So we are hoping this is going to be nice and easy. So actually just going to test fit the spacer on here. We're just going to bolt it on. We're not going to tighten it up all the way. And then we're just going to test fit the wheel because the problem we've got, depending on how wide you go with these spacers, like I said, these are 20 mil, but the problem is the studs might stick out further than the spacer. Like you can feel that they are a little bit, but there is a little recess in the back of here between the bolt holes that that should fit into, but we're just not 100% sure. So we're just gonna test fit it first and just check. And hopefully we don't have to grind down these original studs, but knowing our luck, we probably will. But don't do what Ash has just done because it's definitely not gonna clear if you use the original wheel stud or nut to hold the spacer on. Like these are lower profile so that these definitely clear once they're on here, but the original ones that pop the wheels to the car, they're not gonna work, Ash. So you're gonna have to get that one off there, mate. Right, so now Ash has got the spacer bolted on properly. We can test fit the wheel and see if it is in fact gonna clear these original studs. Cause as you can probably just see in there, like there is these recesses. They look quite deep, but, to be fair, Yeah, they? they do look quite deep. So we're hoping that that is just gonna clear. You see, you can just see that stud sticks out a little bit. So we're hoping it's gonna clear. So let's test fit it and just see. Now there is like, there is a little almost like- Taper. Yeah, taper to the back of the alloy. So that's, it's not like a gap as big as what you can see on the camera, but by eye, just wobble a wheel. Oh yeah, you can feel it and you can hear it. I know, <laughs> but just the thing. We'll do the old Halford's receipt test. Halford's receipt test, yeah. talk me through it. So what we'll do is we'll feed this down between the wheel and the spacer. And if it goes between the wheel and the spacer, obviously there's a gap. 
if it doesn't go down, then I'm presuming the taper is meeting the spacer just out of our line of sight. All right, yeah, actually let's try it. <laughs> but yeah, there you, can oh. see, you can see it's feeding down between. Yeah. So, so there's definitely still a gap there. Yep, so we're gonna be filing the studs or cutting the studs. Yeah, we're gonna have to cut the studs down. So there we go, as we expected, we are gonna have to cut the original studs down a little bit, but it's not a problem because we'll just get the grinder on them. But <sighs> nothing's ever easy, is it? Is it, Ash? Especially, nothing's ever easy. Especially in this way. If it was summer, it'd be nice. A bit more time in the sun, but not now. Um, not yeah, there. but it's still never easy. Right, let's grind the studs down. Oh, now just really quickly, because I know someone's going to bring it up in the comments. If you really wanted to, we haven't got this option, but what we could do is get a like a paint marker and just put a little dab of paint on each of the studs, then put the wheel on. And if when you take the wheel off again, there's paint on the back of the wheel, then you know it's definitely touching. But we're pretty confident with the receipt test that they are sticking out a little bit too far. So just before anyone comments that, because I know it is a good idea to do, but I haven't got a paint marker and we're sure we need to do it anyway. So we're going to cut these down. Right, okay. So the space is just fitted on here just loosely for now. And we've got the studs just on far enough so we know where to mark. So I'm just going to use a Sharpie and kind of mark where we can cut. I think I'll just do one to start with and then maybe fit it back on and just check that I've not cut too much off because that's the last thing I want to do. Like obviously all this that you can see sticking out, like we just don't need it, but I just want to do as little as possible. So I'm going to do one, cut that off and then just test fit it again and just check that we're cutting it in the right place before we do the other three. So we're just going to remove the spacer for the time being. And then I'm just going to wind on one of the nuts just because once we've cut this, it'll be a bit rough. We will file it down, but just winding this off will hopefully help to clean up that thread a little bit. And I've always got tap and die set I can use if we need it. It's time to cut the first stud. So here goes. So I'm not going to be able to file this down with this nut on here, so I'm going to have to remove the nut. Yeah, it's come off nice and easy to be fair. So now I'm just going to file that edge down just so it's not rough at all. And then we'll test fit the spacer before we do the other three. There we go, that's looking pretty good. So I'm just going to test fit it with a nut and that is threading on there nice and easily. So. I'm happy with that, so let's test fit the spacer. So there we go, as you can see, it is pretty much on completely, but I did maybe cut a tiny little bit too much off, but it's just because it's such a hard space to work with, but I'll try and take a little bit less off the other three when I do those, and we should be fine. So let's crack on and get the other three cut down. Okay, so that's all the studs cut and filed down and the space is on here. And to be fair, actually not done too bad a job. Like I know these don't look amazing, but these nuts just wound on by hand. Like there was no rough edges. It wasn't catching at all when they wound on nice and easily. So I'm pretty damn happy with that. That one maybe could have done with being left a little bit longer, but all the others have got all the threads fully engaged. So I'm super happy with that. Now there is actually a little tool you can get, a little like external chamfering tool that you can use uh, just on the end of a drill or an impact or something like that, just to kind of taper the ends and just clean them up a little bit. Like that's probably what's been used on the original ones, but we couldn't get hold of one in time for this video. Now I probably am gonna get one of these at some point, but just with a file that's come out pretty damn well. So we're just gonna torque everything up, then we're gonna fit the wheel and see how this side is looking. And then we're gonna move on and do the other side. Okay, so that's the wheel back on, but before we lower it down, we're just gonna quickly do the other side and then we'll drop it down and just show you how it's sitting. I'm excited for this. How are you feeling, Ash? Do you reckon it's gonna be wide? So, uh, I think it's gonna be wide, but I've got bigger problems on my mind at the moment. Well, what are you up to? Well, I thought while, while, this was being, uh, while this was being done, I thought I'll quickly just throw on some new plates that Mike and Martin got me for my birthday. I thought, oh, quick job, quick job. And uh, it's become more of a problem than the, more of a problem than the spacers. 
Mm. So talk us through what's happened here, Ash. So a Phillips kept rounding off in them. So I've tried to drill them out and the heads have come off, but these are stuck fast in the rib nuts that are in there. So I'm not sure where we're going to go with this at a second. Just going to have to drill them out, aren't we? Right, well, while Ash is doing that, I'm going to crack on and grind down those studs on the other side. But just quickly, you can already see the tread poking out there past the arch and the mud flap. This is going to look so good when this is back down on the ground. Right, let's crack on with the driver's side. So we're just lowering the car down now. And then once we reverse the off of bricks, we can show you exactly how it's sitting. I'm excited to see this. And I think probably once we've seen it, we're going to end up getting some front spaces for mine because they are looking way too skinny, especially with the backs. So come on, Ash, let's get it off the bricks. And there we go, we're down on the ground. And oh my God, they are perfect. They are spot on. You can just see the tire poking out there. Like that looks so good. Oh, that new front plate looks nice, mate. Where'd you get that? Actually, just while we're here, me and Martin got these for Ashley's birthday. So shout out AM plates for doing these for us. They look awesome. They're the same people that did my show plates for my ST. So if you're looking for some custom plates, like show plates or even road plates, because these are road legal, the 4D, then go check out AM Plates. I'll leave a link to their Instagram in the description, drop them a message and get yourself some sick plates. But let's take another look at these spaces. Like they just fit so well. They are spot on. Like you're not gonna get it better than that. You're really not. That fitment is on point. <laughs> it just looks so good. Oh, that shot there. Like, let's have a look at mine for comparison. Yeah, look at that. Look how tucked in that looks compared to that. We are getting spaces on this. 20 mil front spaces on this is happening soon. And I'm probably gonna have to get wider back ones as well. But yeah, front spaces definitely happening on mine. But look at that. All right, I'm so happy with that. And it's not even my car. How are you feeling, Ash? Yeah, I'm happy. Very happy. Okay. It was worth the storm. It was worth the storm. But speaking of the storm, we've been out here for so long, so I think we're gonna have to leave it there. Like I'm definitely, like I said, getting some spaces for mine for the front. That has got to happen. But thank you guys for sticking with us. I know this wasn't the most interesting video. I have got some really good videos coming up for you, hopefully next week, but I am struggling to get hold of stuff at the moment. And obviously the weather is a big factor in whether or not I can get stuff filmed. So if not next week, the week after, I'm gonna have a big, big, big handling mod for my ST coming to you. So keep an eye out for that. And like it goes without saying, but if you're not subscribed to this channel, make sure you do. Otherwise you're gonna miss that sort of stuff. But for this video, it is time to end. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. I think they've heard that the wheels are sticking out past the arches. They're coming.